Good morning and welcome to another edition of Research Fantasy presents our PGA DFS picks for the RBC Canadian Open Championship. This is going to be an interesting week. Last week was an interesting week. Uh, of those in our video, you know, Rory finished very high. Phil Mickelson was an absolute bum. Daniel Berger was good. Um, and Tommy Fleetwood definitely did what I said I thought he was going to do, which was barely make the cut and didn't wouldn't have really been a guy that was putting you in a position to win based on his price. So really outside of Phil, Phil it was a great week. Checking in with our top 10 uh, in our article, we had Daniel Berger, Ty 27th, Jordan Spieth, who was the guy that we did predict to win the tournament, and he won. Rory, tie 4, Paul Casey, tie 11, Ricky Fowler, tie 22, Phil, missed cut, Matt Kuchar, 2nd, Mark Leishman, 6th, Tony Finau, 27th, and Thomas Peters, tied 44. So all things considered was very, very good for us. Unfortunately, we did end up with a fairly high ownership of Phil Mickelson, Louis Oswezen, um, and a couple of other guys that... Uh, ultimately took the opportunity for good money away. Rory at 6 to 8% in a lot of the tournaments was just a beautiful thing when you had him at 30%. So, hopefully, uh, you know, we re we specifically retooled our projection sets for that event and uh we'll see if it comes through for us this week as well. <clears throat> I'm going to go through four uh, four golfers here who pop in our algorithm and then I'll just read our complete top 10 to you. Um, let's start off with Danny Lee, 15-5 fantasy draft, 8,400 FanDuel, 8K DraftKings. Yeah, look, I mean, the last memory we have of Danny Lee is withdrawing from, I think it was the John Deere Classic. It was something prior to the Open, which uh, he also didn't play in. So he's had a couple of weeks to rest. I mean, he only made it one round, and he had posted some pretty ugly numbers in that round anyway. But using 12-round data, he's been exceedingly good. Uh, top 10 in tee to green, birdies gained, approach, and greens in regulation. Uh, you know, didn't really do too poorly in things like par 5 scoring, which is something I'm weighing heavily and he's the top DraftKings point scorer in that time frame as well. So I think that his skill set should be able to do well at this course. Um, you know, his putting had been pretty decent in addition. So I think as long as that stays on, we are looking at a good uh, play here. Next up, let's go with Ches Reevee, 15-2 Fantasy Draft, 6,600 FanDuel, 7,500 DraftKings. Like, when I first started playing uh, DFS Golf, I would see Ches Reevee, and I just got into it at a time where you had a lot of tournaments going on where week in and week out they had big names. Um, and every week I saw Ches Reevee, and I saw him floating the cut line and missing or just barely making, and he was always a tongue-in-cheek joke. Until one of these tournaments where it was just a completely barren field, and I looked down at our spreadsheet, and Ches Reevee pops out at like the 12th option on that week and I was just like really like Ches Reevy you've got to be kidding me well he's done well for me in fact I in that tournament I believe he had the he was the first round leader um has solid history here solid yet unspectacular it pretty much has the same exact profile as Danny Lee all top tens in those stats that I mentioned uh, above um you know, I think he'll probably see rather big ownership because, yeah, there's better names in the field than Ches Reevee. You've got Dustin Johnson, Matt Kuchar, guys like that. But I think he's Reevee's going to be a guy that will be used to try to facilitate the use of those other guys. So I like him. Uh, he'll be in a bunch of my lineups this week. Next up, Matt Kuchar, 18-2 fantasy draft, 10-1 FanDuel, 11-4 DraftKings. Last four appearances here, top 10 finishes. The biggest question for me, and I'm telling you, I did not have a chance. It's Wednesday morning. I'm going to check right now. I know that Brant Snedeker was the only withdraw that I had seen up to this point. Um, it does not look like he did. 
Matt Kuchar looks to still be in this field. So I guess the, what I'm getting at here is uh, I wonder how much this past weekend is you know going to have him focused on this week. That was a very interesting finish. I mean, perhaps he should have been a little more forceful with Rory than to allow him to play for 20-plus minutes on one hole. Um, a hey, Matt, nice guys finish last. You didn't finish last, but, you know, if you're not first, you're last, buddy. And, uh, you know, that basically allowed Jordan to precipitate what ended up becoming one of the best rounds of golf. You know, that back nine is is could be an infamous round uh, or an infamous portion of a round for a golfer. But nonetheless, everything for Kuchar, you know, sets up how you'd expect it to for him here. I'm just really, really curious to see where his mental state is at. And um, he's a guy that I'm, I'm, you know, definitely, definitely interested in uh, using this week. Next up, let's go Harris English, 14-3 fantasy draft, 7K Fandle, 8,400 on DraftKings. Don't know where his ownership level is going to be at. Uh, his only appearance here in the last five years, he missed the cut. I'm not a big proponent of that. It would be different if it was like five out of five or like it was last week with Fleetwood where it was like four out of five appearances uh, in this tournament and you missed the cut. Yeah, you're probably not looking too favorable, but it was only one missed cut and I do believe it was in 2012. So it's been a while. Again, his stats in the last 12 rounds, all six key stats that I look at each week, which change per course, obviously. Um... Top 25 or better for English. T two top 10s, including uh, birdies gained in approach. I know birdies are better percentage is something that a lot of people look at. That does, I can't find that. I'm not using PGA.com, PGATour.com. I'm using a different set of statistics. Um, so I'm trying to use birdies gained as a little bit of a leverage approach to the percentage. Uh, price seems a little bit rich, maybe. Maybe golf players think that that's too much to ask for Harris English that will drop his ownership percentage a little bit lower. That is, that's where I like to play because quite honestly, I'm a numbers guy. I do not care if I don't think Harris English should be priced where he's at. If he shows, if he turns out looking like he should be a good play this week based off of how he's coming into the course, like I'm going to play him. And if no one else wants to play him and he does well, i.e. Rory from last week, fine, I'll take all the monies that I can get. You know, I need it. If you don't need it, congratulations, but I need it and I'm willing to take it. So Harris English, that'll cap off my fourth. Our top 10 rankings based off of our algorithm. Danny Lee, Ches Reeve, Patrick Cantlay, Matt Kuchar, Harris English, Tony Finau, Dustin Johnson, Chad Campbell, Shane Lowry, Daniel Summerhays. That'll wrap it up for this week. Once again, four of our favorite options for tournaments. Harris English, Matt Kuchar, Ches Reeve, Danny Lee. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Head over to researchfantasy.com. Sign up for uh, our community. We're going to be giving away some pretty cool prizes there. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Research and Win, and join us again tomorrow.